Welcome back. We're going over creating and launching an ERC-20 token. In the last couple of videos, we've gone over setting up the local development environment and writing the contract to launch the token. In this video, we'll go over testing the token uh, contract to make sure that everything is working as we expect it to. Okay, here's where we left off. Successfully deployed to our local hardhat network, but uh, we want to be able to test it out and play around with it and make sure it's working. So we've got this deploy script and that's how it's uh, getting deployed to the world, but we need to actually uh, play around with it. So we're gonna go into our test script and we're going to write some tests. So first of all, we're going to change this to describe deploying the token and we'll say it should successfully deploy. Uh, this is an async function and then we can replace this with our token uh, deploy script. So it's getting the contract factory from the demo token uh, contract. It's deploying it and then you know it's waiting for that to finish. Now this in itself is kind of a test because if anything goes wrong here the test will fail. So as a starting point we'll just try out this and see what happens. So we go back to our terminal and we'll run mpx hardhat test and it successfully deployed the token. Okay, great. Now let's try another one. First, uh, we don't wanna have to like copy and paste this every time and we do need the token to deploy every time. So we can add a before each, this should be a before each async function and we're just gonna copy this and put it here. And basically what that will do is before running any of these tests, it will, uh, you know, deploy the token and do all of that part. So we can actually change this to describe our demo token before each. It should successfully deploy. And, you know, we don't really have to put anything here. We could just say like console log success maybe. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna run this before each and then uh, it'll go to the next, it'll go to this next test and, uh, Let's see how that goes. Run this again. Okay, cool. Now, what else do we wanna do? Well, when it's created, there should be, what did we decide? This is about one million of supply. So we wanna make sure that it actually deployed at that amount. So we'll say it should deploy with one million of supply for the owner of the contract async function. Cool. And we don't need to rewrite this because it's all going to get written for us, but we do need some actual addresses to interact with this. So I'm gonna do const owner add one await ethers.get signers. Uh, and what this is gonna do is it's going to give us these two accounts which are the first two accounts way up here, this account zero and account one. So owner is gonna be whatever it's deployed from and address one will be kind of like the next address in that list. So if everything's working properly, then uh, we should be able to uh, check on the balance that the owner has and it should be that same amount that we created here. So first, just to make uh, sure everything's working, I'm going to do console log uh, demo token dot decimals and see what happens here. Demo token is not defined. Okay, so the reason for that is uh, it's defined up here, but that's not gonna be passed into our function. So what we'll wanna do uh, up here is we'll say let demo token and we're also going to say let owner and let address one oops cool and then we'll delete that delete those and let's try it again cool now the reason that we're getting this promise here instead of actual number is that we didn't await uh this demo token dot decimals. So if we put an await here, there it is, 18, cool. So that's what we wanted. So now we wanna make sure that uh, the correct amount is 
uh, being given to the owner of the contract. So I'm going to say const decimals equals await demo token dot decimals. And then we'll say uh, const balance equals await demo token dot balance of and then owner dot address because owner is this first account like we said uh, first account here the one that is being deployed from and so that should uh, come back with the correct balance and then we can do console dot log balance and we'll see what we get so we'll run hard hat test again all right now we're gonna get this big num, right? And this is just how uh, it tends to get stored is as a big number because it is often a big number with a ton of decimals. So one thing you can do is you could do console log um, parse int for balance. And let's see what that comes back as. And here we go, uh, 10 to the 24th which if you kind of like know the math off the top of your head, you'll know that is going to be a million. So it's correct, but let's just make sure. And the way we can do that is instead of parse int, uh, there's a built-in function where you can parse ether. So we'll do ethers.utils.parse ether. Oh yeah, I always mix these up because we're getting this error that it must be a string. And so we might, this might have to be format ether. Let's see. There it is. All right. So, uh, and this is just helpful to know is format ether takes it from the 18 decimals to normal decimals. Parse ether takes it from like a hundred and adds all the decimals. So like if I did console.log ethers utils parse ether of call it a hundred this should give us either a big num or a hundred followed by, yeah, cool. So uh, that's just if you need to send in an ether amount. Uh, okay, so now it's printing out the right amount of a million and we just wanna make sure that that is correct. So we will say expect balance equals one million. And we can't just use normal balance because that's going to be the big num. So we'll say format ether, paste that. And let's see what happens. And there it goes. Cool. Okay, so that's working. Great. Uh, it's correctly deploying with uh, the right amount. We don't need this decimals since the decimal number is uh, the same as what we get from format ether. Uh, so what else do we want to test? Well, we want to make sure that we can actually use the contract uh, the way it's expected, which would mean being able to send tokens uh, back and forth. So we'll say it should let you send tokens to another address async function. Cool. Now, if you're ever unsure how to do something, uh, you can always go look at uh, your contracts uh, JSON artifact, because this is going to have like all the different functions that you can do. So we want to know how to send some to an, uh, another address. So it looks like transfer from does it and transfer. So we'll use the transfer function and we just need a recipient address and an amount. And this is going to be an amount including the 18 decimals. So uh, the way we'll do that is we'll go back here and we'll say await demo token dot transfer. So this is gonna send it from this owner account. And then we'll say address one dot address. So this will send it to the uh, second account in the list. And if you remember this first thing is this recipient address, and then we need an amount. And so we'll say ethers dot utils dot parse ether 100. We wanna send them 100 of our demo token. And then uh, assuming that works, we should expect await demo token dot balance of address one dot address to equal uh, ethers dot utils dot parse ether 100. All right, now let's see if that works. Great, so that is working fine. 
And if you're ever unsure, you know, you can always add these console logs along the way. I'm just kind of skipping it since I showed you in the last one. What else do we want to make sure this contract does? So we know that uh, we know it can be sent. We might want to test this approval function. Uh, the, okay, these are events actually. Allowance, approve, uh, balance of. So let's test this approve function actually because this will let us I uh, allow another address to send tokens on our behalf. And this is what you're doing when you're hitting like accept on the allowance. So to do this, we're gonna want one more account. So we'll say let adder two and address two, great. And then we'll say it should let you give another address the approval to send on your behalf. Async function. Cool. So we will await demo token dot approve, <clears throat> and then go back here and we can look approve needs a spender address and an amount address. So I'm going to first connect to address one. Now, if you don't do this, it uses the owner account by default, but you can connect to any other of the 19 accounts. <clears throat> that hard hat spins up. So we'll connect to number one and then we'll approve owner address to send, call it a thousand tokens. Now, assuming that worked, I should be able to do the transfer from. So transfer from, what this lets you do is transfer tokens for another account. So the sender, recipient, and amount, oops. So if I go back here, I should be able to do await demo token dot transfer from address one dot address. And since I didn't do the connect, I'm acting from the owner account now. Let's transfer from address one dot address to address two dot address 1000. And uh, you probably have already noticed that we need to add this parse ether here. So we got it there. Add it there as well. And then we should await, expect, oops, did that backwards. Expect, await, balance of demo token dot balance of adder to dot address to equal this amount. And now we can go run that test. All right. ERC20 transfer amount exceeds balance. Okay, now why did that happen? Well, it happened because we tried to transfer tokens from address one to address two, but address one doesn't have any tokens. Remember, all of them were minted to uh, the main, to the owner address. And when you're running tests, uh, actions don't carry from one test to the next. So even though we sent 100 of them to address one in this test, uh, that doesn't carry over to this one. So address one doesn't have any tokens, which is why we can't transfer them. So we're gonna need to add a extra line here where we await transferring to address one, a thousand tokens so that we can then transfer them on behalf of address one to address number two. We go back, run the test again. And there you go. Okay, so that gives you some ideas of how you can kind of like write the tests, make sure that your token contract is working. The great thing about using these uh, Open Zeppelin standards is that you don't have to do a ton of testing usually, it should just work, uh, but that's going to make sure, but doing a bit of testing is just gonna make sure that everything is behaving as normal and you can write really as many as you want uh, until you feel comfortable that everything is behaving as planned. All right, in the next video, we will go ahead and deploy this to Polygon.